This is Lips, and you're listening to the Metal Voice. Welcome to a fantastic episode here. We've been waiting years to book our special guest today, and finally, we're proud to announce that Lips from Anvil is finally here on the Metal sh Voice. The you, metal. Always got, you always got the show right. <laughs> on the, show, the Metal Voice. <laughs> Lips, what's happening, man? How much is the Metal Voice talk like uh, talk like the Exorcist? <laughs> <laughs> so we've been looking forward to have this. Now we've got better reasons than ever. A brand new Anvil album, Anvil is Anvil, will be due out in February. Yeah, so, right, right off the bat, Lips. So what's what's different on this album than from the last album? Well, we wouldn't have called it Anvil is Anvil if, it, if we had changed. So, <laughs> so it's not. Okay. It's not really a change. It's not off. The, it's not off the trail. It's what we've been doing all along, and just maybe a little bit more focused. Maybe, maybe it will become some people's m most favorite Anvil album. I don't know. But it's a great examples of what we are, and in today's day and age, that's about as simple as I can put it. We've got a new bass player, Chris Robertson. Right. Italiano, what happened with Italiano? Can you tell us? Basically what happened was he, he, it was made uh, obvious to him we didn't need him anymore. Ah. Uh, okay, because, you know, on, one, on the last tour that he did, we brought... We brought Chris with us just to do the, just to be our roadie. And, you know, Chris is going up and doing sound checks and it sounds better than it did with Sal. <laughs> and Sal felt like, what the fuck am I doing here? And at the end of the tour, he quit. That's basically what happened. Uh, we got to understand, we hired Sal in an emergency. Because we had a, 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 a an American, we had three weeks, three weeks to get a a a, 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 a bass player ready for for a, a month and a half tour. And uh, our original bass player went and quit on us. So we hired the first guy that we, you know, our, uh, an old friend who was Sal. And it wasn't a permanent a permanent situation. It was it was under a, an emergency, and that's why that went down that way. Sure. sure. As we would have hired Chris to begin with, but we didn't we didn't know him at that moment in in time, and it wasn't it wasn't until about six months to a year later that we met Chris, because we had no choice. Uh, rehearsing without a bass player is no fun, so. Uh, <laughs> Sal lived in New York City, which is way too fucking far to rehearse. So we had no choice but to get a bass player in Canada, which is what I preferred and what I wanted originally. But unfortunately, because of the emergency in time, there was no time. But it ended up where it needed to be. Uh, Chris is an amazing bass player. Extraordinary, extraordinary uh, technique. He uses his fingernails as well as the tips of his fingers. Oh so my God! He's not a guitar pick bass player. It's a it's a it's a finger bass player, but it's got he's got a lot harder edge than you would normal than a, a regular finger style bass player would have. Aside from just his uh, abilities on bass guitar and his his that stuff, he's a great singer. Which helps. Which helps which really helps. In other words, we got another instrument in the band. Let's get to some of the tracks right now. I mean, uh, yeah, you say it's a, you know, Anvil is Anvil, but you know, you look at something like Daggers and Rum. This is Anvil meets Ailstorm here. This is something pirate metal. Pirate never, metal. never been done on in any of the albums before. Well, no. Well, but then again, you you can look through all the albums and there's always unique songs on each of them. I mean, come on, man. We've never did another Mothra again. We never did yeah. another Metal on Metal again. We never did another Stop Me again. We never did another Free as the Wind again. And there's n there's no doubles and there's no repeats of, of a lot of those songs. So is this any different? No, not really. 
And then one of the things I think Anvil's overlooked, uh, been overlooked over the years, I mean, going back to, for me, myself, was Paper General, uh, you know, is, is the serious, serious topics of the day that you're covering. And on this album, there's gun control and die for a lie. Yeah, well, we've always been kind of like, there's been always little bits and pieces that talk about the relevance of, of the moment. Um, that's part of what, I guess, what keeps us relevant. To begin, to, you know, if you if you don't keep your eyes open and your and your your yourself alive in the environment, you go you die. So we're we're a long way from butterbus jerky. <laughs> hey, that came from honest experience. What can I say? <laughs> and then we're talking about it's your move. I mean, the tribute to Lemmy, right? Or I I wouldn't say the tribute just to Motorhead, maybe an homage. I mean, what are your thoughts on the passing of Lemmy and the song? And, and Phil Taylor as well. Yeah, Phil Taylor. Unfortunately. Well, the, the, the thing is, that, um, when, I was recording, when I was recording the vocals, which all my vocals are I do them pretty much spontaneously, I don't, I don't uh, pre-record and figure it all out. I go in with a sheet of lyrics, and I stand in front of the microphone, they run the music into the headphones, and I start singing, and it's sometimes it's the first thing that comes to my mind. When I got to the line, Ace of Spades and the Joker is wild, the, the producer's watching me through the glass of the studio, and I, I, got, I, I bent my head back and, and did the Lemmy stance and just went up to the microphone and went, Ace of Spades and the Joker is wild, <laughs> and it, he went fucking nuts. <laughs> So I said, okay, let me sing it properly now. And he goes, no, 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 I want to leave it. Let me leave it. And I said, well, I don't know. It doesn't, it's not serious. I meant it as a joke. And he goes, well, you know, what the hell, man? You know, leave it. It has a lot of character. And I said, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> I love that. Maybe he'll get to hear it. I hope he gets to hear it. Okay, just leave it. So that's how that got there. Yeah, so it, it was done more within the, 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 the level in hope that he'll get to hear it rather than fuck I'm doing it because he's going to die yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking he's going to die you know what I'm saying nobody was but, No, it, it's like it seemed like he was going to go on forever but <laughs> unfortunately that's not the case yeah so I mean yeah Lemmy <laughs> Lemmy's a great guy he was a great guy man I'm, I'm going to miss him man it's fucking Real uh, hole, you know, real fucking, real fucking hole in the in the in the fabric, you know what I mean? It's right. just, I don't know, it, no replacing that. It's it's such a magical magical man, really. Let's talk about the songs. Go through Zombie Apocalypse. Okay, so what was the inspiration for this? Uh, I, I don't know. Like in a certain sense, I kind of figured out what's a zombie apocalypse. I guess it's chemical warfare. Sure, sure. And so I just kind of wrote a song about that, about what would it be like, what what are we doing, and all that kind of shit. So um, musically speaking, it's fucking, I love the song. That's actually my favorite song on the album. So. And what's the, what's the significance of the uh, the album cover? Yeah. With the... the Anvil's Anvil. Anvil. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, Self-recognition, isn't it? Painted by Rob, right? Yeah. The whole thing is meant to be as pure as possible, with no intervention whatsoever. That it is pure anvil. The 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 title of the album to the person who actually did the artwork. Even that guy is in the band. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, as and it's pure a as we could be. Um. And it wasn't about being an exciting cover. That's not what the idea was. The idea was just to basically say, we know who we are, what we are, and what we've been, and we know where we're going, and we know what we're doing, and we're happy with it and content. Lips, 2006, a documentary comes out. There's a wave of interest for Anvil. Has, has any interest been lost since? The interest has not changed. I, I really don't think so. Um, and in fact, actually, the, the more people have seen the movie since. 
plus the fact it's moved, uh, in particularly in some countries, uh, onto regular into regular TV programming. I would say even more so now than than ever, and I don't think that that's going to dissipate anytime soon. Um, certainly, there are millions of people that have never seen the band that have seen the movie so therefore we have an endless amount of work out there but theoretically we're going to be playing for the next fucking until i die <laughs> and what does that mean that means that i can make a living from being an anvil for the rest of my life uh you know to use that film have that film be a catalyst to finally get some re the well-deserved recognition of all your hard work and, and that it's carried on is, is fantastic news. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. And, uh, and that's, again, you can, you can be, uh, Anvil can, can be viable for years and years to come. And the proof is here on this album, which is Anvil is Anvil. Well, that's the thing, you know, the, 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 other, the other side of this story, if the band was a lousy band and they just made a movie, it would have dissipated in a few weeks. Right. And you can watch the dozens and dozens of, and even some of the big bands have tried to do documentaries and it's made no difference for their careers. And in fact, it's been detrimental. And the reason being is, and there's a number of reasons. First of all, you need to be, have been relevant enough. Anvil were an inspiration to Anthrax, Megadeth and, and Metallica. We were one of their favorite bands. We still are one of their favorite bands. You can't, you can't uh, hire Lars to sit in on your documentary and get him to say those things. He did that for free. In fact, all the members of all those bands did that for free. Right. These are unique situations. You can't. Nobody can recreate that and think that they're going to get the same results. Never mind the fact of how the documentary came to be to begin with. If you take into consideration, this was a fan that we let into our change room in 1982. Right. Grew up to be Steven Spielberg's screenwriter came looking for his old friends that let him into that change room in 82, meets up with us and goes, I'm going to make a movie about you. That in itself is a story within itself that you can't recreate. You get what you put in, in life. If we had closed the door on that 15-year-old kid in 1982, there would have been no Anvil movie. Right. I wouldn't have the success I do today. This has been sustained by by good recordings and the band being a good band beyond just a movie. You're going to be touring with Udo, right? Udo. Uh, yeah. I, it's coming up. It's the Durkin Schneider tour, actually. We're right. going to be doing his farewell to accept. You want to tell us about that? Well, actually, we got involved with um, Udo's management, and that's who actually manages us now. Great. Um, what that brought was Udo's producer as well, and that's who produced the album. Um, and to that point, uh, it was produced in Udo's son's studio. <laughs> <laughs> so we're completely hooked up with those people, and... Um, the plan was even before going in that we were going to go do this tour so it was all like okay we're going to do this 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 and this and then you're going to end up on tour with udo and it's all good man so this is how, how you actually get someplace in the music business you, you actually plan and work with people that can put shit together so we got we got advil touring europe from the beginning of february to the end of april if you've ever seen them live you'll never forget it the energy the guitar playing, the musicianship, everything you want from a, a show, Anvil provides. So you got to make sure you get out there, buy your tickets, and and watch them. And you'll just find us on Facebook. We don't have a we don't have a uh, an actual website anymore. So um, that's where to find out anything you want. It's all there. 
thanks to yep. Lips and thanks to another episode here on The Metal Voice. Okay, thanks guys. We'll speak to you and see you soon.